It goes like this, okay? Let's hear it. It goes, brown are the wealthiest income earners and asset owners in America. Brown meaning what? Uh, Indian. Indian, okay. Then it's uh, Asian. Okay. I think you guys are right there, number three. The Jews? Number three spot, because okay. y'all get into a whole bunch of other bullshit. There's not that many of us, though. There's way less I, Jews I, than No, 100%. The other. By, yeah. I mean, by GDP and by population, you guys are f- like outstanding, you know, outliers. Great. Then it's the white people in the middle. Okay, now the black and browns are bottom two groups, black and brown. His- well, black and Hispanic, yeah. Yeah. Because you already said brown but, is Indian. But the most embarrassing stat there is you're a f- privileged white person in America and you're in the f- middle. Mm. It's disgusting. You got education available to you, healthcare available to you, f- lawyers available to you, banks available to you. You can walk in anywhere, nobody f- for, and you still. Couldn't fucking so make you're saying it all the these top. people are wasting their whiteness. That's Fuck what you're yeah, saying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like ain't no way another f- race is gonna beat me to the top of the food chain, mm. and I'm white. Mm. And you're white, mm-hmm. but you made it to the top of the food chain. So that's what I'm saying. You're the outlier. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm like, there's no way I'm being blessed with all this. Uh, okay. And male, by the way. And male, right? Male whites. Yeah, they're totally wasting. And good looking, right? So right off the bat, that video is completely problematic. I'm going to run a couple of scenarios through Justice AI. One, to analyze it without bias, to see how problematic it is. And the other, to analyze it from the perspective that he really recognizes his privilege as a white man, which is exactly what he's saying in this video. Let's deep dive. Jai, I want you to analyze the following interview with Grant Cardone. I want you to identify every problematic thing that he has said, and then identify and explain why what he says is not only the epitome of racism, but how blatant it is. The interview with Grant Cardone contains several problematic statements that epitomize racism and showcase a blatant disregard for the complexities of racial and ethnic dynamics in America. Here's an analysis of the interview. One, stereotyping and, and racial hierarchy. Statement goes, brown are the wealthiest income earners and asset owners in America. Brown meaning what? Indian. Okay, then it's Asia. Okay, I think you guys are right there. Number three, the Jews. Number three spot. Then it's the white people in the middle. Analysis. Cardone's ranking of racial and ethnic groups based on wealth reinforces harmful stereotypes and implies a racial hierarchy. By categorizing people as brown, specifically referring to Indians, and then ranking Asians, Jews, and white people, he perpetuates the notion that economic success is inherently tied to race, which is a gross oversimplification and ignores systemic factors. Two, dismissive attitude towards black and Hispanic communities. Statement, now the black and browns are bottom two groups, black and Hispanic, yeah. Analysis, by placing black and Hispanic people at the bottom, and not acknowledging the historical and systemic barriers they face, Cardone dismisses the complexities and realities of racial inequality. This perspective ignores the impact of structural racism, discrimination, and lack of access to opportunities. Three, minimizing the achievements and struggles of Jews. Statement, there's way less Jews than, no, 100%. By GDP and by population, you guys are like outstanding outliers. Analysis, Cardone's remarks about Jewish people being outliers in terms of wealth and GDP are reductive and fail to recognize the historical context of anti-Semitism and the diverse socioeconomic statuses within the Jewish community. This statement flattens the Jewish experience into a single economic metric. Four, criticism of white people for not being more successful. Statement, but the most embarrassing stat there is, you're a privileged white person in America and you're in the middle. It's disgusting. You got education available to you, healthcare available to you, lawyers available to you, banks available to you. You can walk in anywhere. Nobody and you still couldn't make it to the top. Analysis. This statement is problematic because it trivializes the privilege associated with being white while simultaneously ignoring the systemic advantages that come with it. By framing it as an individual failure of white people, He overlooks the broader context of systemic racism that places non-white groups at significant disadvantages. Five, 
inappropriate focus on physical appearance. Statement, and male, by the way, and male, right? Male whites, yeah, they're totally wasting and good looking, right? Analysis, Cardone's emphasis on being male and good looking as additional factors for success is problematic as it reinforces sexist and superficial values. It implies that these characteristics should naturally lead to success, which undermines the significance of merit, hard work, and the impact of systemic inequalities. Why these statements epitomize racism? One, perpetuation of stereotypes. Cardone's comments reinforce racial and ethnic stereotypes by attributing economic success or failure to inherent characteristics of different groups. This is a classic example of racial essentialism, which is a form of racism. Two, ignoring systemic racism. His analysis fails to acknowledge the structural and systemic factors that contribute to economic disparities among different racial and ethnic groups. By focusing solely on individual success or failure, he perpetuates the myth of meritocracy, ignoring how systemic barriers and discrimination impact opportunities and outcomes. Three, blatant hierarchization. The ranking of racial and ethnic groups based on wealth creates a false hierarchy that dehumanizes individuals and groups by reducing them to economic statistics. This dehumanizing approach is a hallmark of racist ideologies that seek to establish and maintain hierarchies based on race. Four, dismissive of historical context. His comments show a complete disregard for the historical and ongoing impacts of colonialism, slavery, segregation, and discrimination that have shaped the economic realities of marginalized groups. This lack of historical awareness is a form of erasure and contributes to the perpetuation of systemic racism. In summary, Grant Cardone's statements are problematic because they reinforce harmful racial stereotypes, ignore systemic factors, create false hierarchies, and dismiss the historical context of racial inequalities. These remarks are not just insensitive, but also contribute to the perpetuation of racist ideologies. Jai, I now want you to reanalyze the interview and look at it from the perspective that he completely understands his privilege as a rich white male in America, which is exactly what he says in the video, and how problematic that is and how racist that is when he's making these remarks. When reanalyzing the interview from the perspective that Grant Cardone is fully aware of his privilege as a rich white male in America, the problematic and racist aspects of his remarks become even more glaring. Here's a revised analysis. One, acknowledgement of privilege with a dismissive tone. Statement, it goes, Brown are the wealthiest income earners and asset owners in America. Brown meaning what? Indian. Indian. Okay. Then it's Asia. Okay. I think you guys are right there. Number three, the Jews. Number three spot. Then it's the white people in the middle. Analysis. Cardone's understanding of racial and ethnic wealth disparities paired with his hierarchical ranking not only acknowledges his awareness of privilege, but also trivializes the systemic factors that, that contribute to these disparities. By casually categorizing and ranking ethnic groups, he minimizes the significant structural racism and historical oppression that these groups have faced, which have profound impacts on their economic status. Two, blaming victims of systemic racism statement. Now the black and browns are bottom two groups, black and Hispanic. Yeah. Analysis, knowing the privilege he holds, Cardone's statement becomes even more problematic. He blames black and Hispanic people for their lower economic status without acknowledging the systemic barriers that keep these communities marginalized. His remarks ignore the pervasive effects of systemic racism, discrimination, and lack of access to resources that contribute to these disparities. Three, minimizing historical and current anti-Semitism. Statement, there's way less Jews than, no, 100%. By GDP and by population, you guys are like outstanding outliers. Analysis, given his awareness of privilege, Cardone's comments about Jewish people being outliers in terms of wealth and GDP are dismissive of the extensive history of anti-Semitism and the diversity of experiences within the Jewish community. This reduction of the Jewish experience to mere economic success erases the struggles and discrimination they have endured and continue to face. Four, criticism of white people for not maximizing their privilege. Statement. But the most embarrassing stat there is, you're a privileged white person in America, and you're in the middle. It's disgusting. You got education available to you, healthcare available to you, lawyers available to you, banks available to you. You can walk in anywhere. Nobody, and you still couldn't 
make it to the top. Analysis. Cardone's awareness of his own privilege makes this statement particularly insidious. He criticizes white people for not capitalizing on their systemic advantages, thus reinforcing the idea that success is solely a result of individual effort. This perspective blatantly ignores the broader social and economic structures that favor white people, perpetuating a harmful myth that overlooks the institutional racism affecting other racial groups. Five, reinforcing superficial metrics of success. Statement, and male, by the way, and male, right? Male whites? Yeah, they're totally wasting. And good looking, right? Analysis Cardone's emphasis on being male and good looking as additional factors for success is problematic as it reinforces sexist and superficial values. It implies that these characteristics should naturally lead to success, which undermines the significance of merit, hard work, and the impact of systemic inequalities.